And with that, I'm going to uh, introduce our first Future of Technology talk, Lou Martinez Sancho, who will uh, from Kairos Power, who will uh, take it away from here. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Thea, uh, for the presentation. Thank you, the Breakthrough Institute. So um, I'm Lou Martinez Sancho. I'm the Vice President of uh, Strategy and Innovation. I'm also leading supply chain, uh, procurement, and marketing and communications at Kairos Power. I super, super thrilled to be here today uh, for different reasons. Uh, I, I will go back in 2017. I recall an, an article and our study produced by the Breakthrough Institute that it was um, how to uh, make nuclear innovative. And that was around March 2017. Uh, in the same period of time, in April, the ICAP and um, Innovation um, uh, World Conference was hosted as well in San Francisco. And at the same time, the Third Way published an amazing map uh, so in all the ecosystem or private pli public works going on in the U.S. and the startups trying to develop nuclear to fight against climate change in a different way. Why it was so exciting? At that time, I was working on the current nuclear industry. Uh, for a decade, I was trying to push those ideas and seeing all that writing feel so supportive in how things can change in uh, the nuclear industry to support better uh, the climate change. So really thank you for the invitation because I've been following you since very early on the background and seeing all those names of all those articles and now being able to share with you uh, here and also with the people uh, that are watching us is pretty exciting. So that's the reason why I joined Kairos. So Kairos power mission is to enable the world transition to clean energy with the ultimate goal of dramatically improving people's quality of life while protecting the environment. So I think that most of the people here working on policies, uh, we agree that nuclear should be part of the, of the solution. But in order uh, to achieve that mission, we must prioritize our efforts to focus on a clean energy that is affordable and safe. And on the decade of the 10th, uh, some of those reports uh, from the Break Ener uh, Breakthrough Institute, they really pointed um, how the problem was not safety, uh, was not waste, was really being cost competitive to be sure uh, that we can uh, be part of that solution. So what did Kairos mean? Uh, Kairos, for those with um, interest in ancient Greek and philosophy, is another term to talk about time, and it means the right of the opportune moment. So this slide uh, that it seems not up to date, but is why Kairos exists. So our co-founder and CEO, Mike Lofer, was working in UC Berkeley uh, doing uh, different um, uh, programs of research. And you see the spike uh, that you see uh, there between the 20s and uh, the early 20,000s and 2010s, a lot of um, gas combined cycle assets has been built in the US as well as around the world. But in the US, that happens that it means that by 2030, uh, we have a great opportunity to exit definitely fossil fuels and really together with uh, renewables, energy storage, energy efficiency, uh, and thanks to the policies and new ways of producing uh, uh, nuclear, we can tackle climate change. And that's the reason why Kairos was born in the early 2060s. So what is Kairos technology? So they asked me, Lou, you know, usually we have all these talks, we talk about very high level about SMRs and about advanced nuclear, really tell us uh, what is uh, nuclear. So, and what Kairos power uh, technology, how it's gonna help us uh, to achieve these, uh, these goals. So Kairos power is singularly focused on developing the fluoride salt high temperature reactor. And I brought here, um, I can show it later as well, this is the fuel that we are choosing, of course, not radioactive. This is just the pebble, the graphite pebble. Inside, we will have uh, the uh, trice of fuel. So this pebble that you are seeing here is the side of a pimple ball. Uh, I'm not going to drop it just in case to avoid yes, uh, making any uh, um, disturbance here. But uh, actually, if you go to the uh, DOE website, you will see that is the most robust fuel that has never been developed. 
So two, that means that it's very powerful. And this small ball produces the same amount of energy as if we burn like six tons of coal. So it's very early, it's Monday morning, I let you look, let, make the math of the number of CO2 emissions avoided just with one of these single strikes of pebbles. So the second part of our technology that is very important is the uh, molten salt, is FLIP. What is FLIP? You are seeing the picture there. So FLIP is a mixture of lithium and beryllium. And why uh, FLIP is so important in the combination of this technology? Well, because it's chemical stable, uh, and secondly, that means that we can operate the reactor as a low pressure and we don't need all the uh, safety systems that a traditional uh, big light water reactor will need. So the combination of both TRISO and FLIP allow us to have a very optimized safety footprint that have a very interesting safety case that allow us to reduce cost at the same time as being safe. But we cannot only innovate on the technology. So in Keros, we were very, very inspired and mirroring SpaceX. If I recall that first article in the 2017, uh, the Breakthrough Institute was saying how other complex industries similar to, in, uh, to nuclear were able to innovate. So aerospace is one of them. Um, so we learned from uh, SpaceX that utilizing rapid spiral development cycles will allow us to move faster on the de development cycle. Just to give you an idea for those with less nuclear background, currently to develop a new nuclear reactor on a new fuel in the nuclear space, it takes 25 years of planning, developing. All that is just 20 years, 25 years. So when you start building the next phase, of course, you, you find a lot of problems uh, ongoing. Uh, testing comes even even uh, further, and at the end we have this stable development phase between plan and design that takes too long. So we learn from SpaceX that we need to learn by doing. We need to go back to the early 60s experience. Like in France, they have the Super Phoenix program, a fast uh, reactor. They started with uh, Rhapsody, a very small reactor, learning by doing, then they move into Phoenix, then they move into Super Phoenix. So very similar. So in Kairos, we ask ourselves, what is the Falcon 1 for a nuclear developer uh, that is developing a KPFHR technology? So for us, is the engineering testing unit, is what you are seeing there, U facility. So in order to get to U facility, we are accelerating and optimizing very uh, small loops of development of plan building test, uh, sorry, plan uh, designing, uh, build and test very fast before doing those loops. Why we're doing that? Because we need to the risk technology things that we need to learn from them. We need to the risk on the manufacturing and the supply chain side. We need to the risk also on the licensing side and also on the construction side. And all those learnings from one iteration to the other uh, all those lessons learned allow to the risk those work packages that has a direct impact on cost. So the second iteration, I recall that in the middle we have a lot of small loops. The second one is the Hermes reactor. So we move into a, a nuclear uh, iteration that is a low power demonstration reactor, 35 mega thermal. The objective for doing this iteration is to be sure that we're going to be cost competitive developing nuclear heat. Um, the, we have again a non-nuclear iteration, it's going to be the U facility, it's a reactor system demonstration unit that is going to allow us to uh, the risk uh, the OEM cost, prove that we are able to build and manufacture big components, and it's going to help us as well to build a training facility. And then by 2030, we are expecting to uh, build our first commercial plant that will be around 140 megawatt electric. We are on the wall of the small modular reactors. Uh, all of us, we, we share the economy of scales and the fact that we have a lot of flexibility to build one, two, three uh, reactors uh, in a plant, depending on the need of the utility. So this is Hermes. This is the non-power reactor. It's an artistic rendering. You see that the shape is very different 
uh, from current nuclear and those big uh, towers. We have a very exciting announcement from uh, the policy side and the regulator side. So last week, uh, we submit uh, the first step of the construction permit of Hermes and to the NRC. So you will see uh, all that ongoing in the coming weeks. We are waiting until NRC accepted as tendering, and then we'll start communicating how we've been able uh, to do that. Uh, we need to thank you all the... Um, public, uh, all the NGOs here on the room that help us to develop those technologies. I will move very fast. Um, so uh, we need also to invest on the infrastructure. So in Kairos Power, we're investing as well in vertically integrating critical components, always uh, to learn by doing. And we have uh, submit, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, I think a do uh, over 20 topical reports to the NRC and the first uh, um, working permit for, for Hermes to the NRC of a non light water reactor. We are the recipients of the risk award of the ARTP, and we have a collaborative agreement with TBA. And last thing, so what you are seeing here and on the policy side, there are two areas where we can collaborate and we need your support. Of course, it's all the clean uh, tech areas that we would like them to be more uh, technological agnostic. So if a uh, if a utility needs to produce uh, CO2 uh, free uh, electricity or energy because we can produce also high temperature and heat with this reactor, we like that will be agnostic. And on the regulatory side, as you can see, we're moving very fast. So what you're seeing on the uh, image uh, was one of the tests where it's showing how we can uh, handle uh, the pebble uh, inside the reactor. So we are expecting to uh, deploy, uh, to construct and have operating uh, Hermes by 2026. And therefore, we need to work in three areas. Uh, one is um, the um, uh, moving the NRC into a risk-informed approach and going out of a deterministic approach because we are not allied with the reactor and we don't have the size of the reactors. There are a lot of improvements in NEPA and many other, um, and many other policies. Uh, the third aspect is the access to high HLU, high SA, low enriched uranium that is needed actually uh, to develop uh, these dry soap pebbles. So we need to accelerate. I think the work is being done on the policy side in the last five years is fantastic, but it needs to go much faster. And the last point, of course, is on the ARDP. As we learned from SpaceX, uh, in Kairos, we're working on a milestone approach very similar to the COTS program uh, that they put in place together with uh, SpaceX. Um, so uh, it's going to be, it's gonna be a, another round table this afternoon to talk about all those policies. And thank you all. And I will be happy to answer your questions during these two days. <laughs>